What's your name? We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to open our Bibles in the Old Testament, the book of Jonah. The Old Testament. Jonah chapter 1. I invite the church to stand up so we can read the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jonah chapter 1. Actually, Jonah chapter 2. Chapter 2. 2 1. Jonah 2, verse 1. Thus says the word of the Lord. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he, Lord, we are thankful for your presence and for the precious of blood of Jesus, and because he has allowed us to enter into your sanctuary and to present ourselves before you. We plead for your word, in your word that you may bless your people, your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. When God He calls Abraham, He says that from the descendants of Abraham, all the nations will be blessed. All the nations of the earth will be blessed. And the Lord says that the Lord can call children of Abraham, even from the stones. And there's a verse in the Bible of the Lord that says that we, the ones who believe in the Lord, didn't come from the flesh or the blood. So we are, have been made children of God because we believed in his name, the name of God, the name of the one who have been sent by God, Jesus, the Savior of the world. So then every servant of God, every children of God, they have been called to be a blessing. You should you be a blessing and all the families of the nation will be blessed and the word speaks about an individual a prophet whose name was Jonah the meaning was generated by a dove uh, a dove typifies the spirit of God so then the prophet where it was rested upon him the spirit of God the Holy Spirit of God and this man he was called by God for a mission. He was conclaimed. He was chosen so that through him, a city with more than 120,000 people would be delivered from a judgment and a condemnation. And the word says, my brethren, that God speaks directly with Jonah. And the Bible says that many verses in the Bible that says that that testified that God does that. He speaks directly with Abram. He spoke, he spoke directly with Moses. And he spoke directly with Joshua. And he spoke directly with many other servants of God. And the Lord, to this day, he speaks directly to each one of us. Sometimes through a dream, through a vision, when we fall into a deeper sleep, or sometimes through a praise or his word, uh, through the voice of a child. The Lord also uses nature to speak with man, to show to man the path and pointing out to him a direction. Because the God of Abraham, our God, is the God that is created of heaven and earth, and he has power upon heaven and earth. So then the Lord comes to Jonah and says, Jonah, rise up. I have a mission for you, for you to do. The Bible says that many are called, but John, Jonah, he was chosen. And it is a privilege for men to be chosen by God. So if you imagine the nation of Israel in those days, how many men existed? And then God chooses a man, Jonah, so that through him, as I said, and I want to repeat it again, a nation, a city, would be blessed by him. 
But the word says, my brother, that when Jonah rises up, he takes an opposite, uh, takes a stand in opposition to the plan of God. A servant of God that made the option of not obeying his call, not obeying the Lord, not obeying his Lord. In the Bible, it says that not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, it will inherit the earth, but only those who does, all the ones who do the will of God. So Jonah make a decision to go astray from the Lord, to hide from the Lord. And one of the Psalms says, where am I going to go away from your spirit? Or oh, where can I escape from your face? And Jonah, therefore, begins to leave a spiritual decline. He enters into a boat, and in that boat, instead of him bringing a blessing to the, mem to the crew of the boat, he brought a great problem. He great, caused a great harm. He entered, and in the place where he was, brought their harm. And the Bible says that the people had to throw away all the resources that they had because of the presence of Jonah. Man was not called for this purpose. The servant of God was not called to do this, called to cause harm to others. The servant of God was called to bring light, to bring profit. So remember John Joseph from Egypt, he went to prison. He brought prophet to the prison. So when he left the prison, he became Zephaniah Panea, the savior of the world. In Egypt, he produces prophet, produced prophet to Pharaoh. And now, when you uh, examine Daniel and his friends, the servant of God brought prophet to the kingdom of the Babylon, and they brought cross prosperity for the place where they were. And here, Jonah, he was doing this because, why is that? Because he was living a life that was contrary to his call, contrary to the plan, the project that God had for his life. And the word says, my brethren, that even nature, the Bible says that the storm rose up, a great wind, and now the boat was about to sink. And everyone there was going to lose their lives. In Bahia, in Brazil, the place I come from, about 15, 20 years ago, maybe even 25 years ago, six fishermen went, took a, a boat to go out and fish. And in high sea, a strong wind came, a big storm came, and the boat capsized. And the fishermen, they began to each one began to call for their God. Oh, my, my saint, help me. And this each one was getting worse. And there was a servant of God there in that boat and said, now that you have called all your gods and your gods didn't resolve the situation, now I'm going to call upon my God and he's going to deliver us from death. And one of these people who were in the boat, who was his brother-in-law, he said, if your God does that, from this day forward, he will be my God. In the servant of God there, his name is jo uh, José Augusto. He uh, uh, pleaded to God, and God operated a great deliverance to those people. And that individual that said, that if that happened from that day forward, the God of José Augusto would be his God, Today is our pastor, the church of Ponta Corumbal in Bahia, Brazil. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we see the difference. Once again, we see the difference between the one who serve God and the ones who don't serve God. 
So here is the situation of Jonah. At the same time, an individual preaching in the region of Sao Paulo, in Brazil, he said that a whale came there eating everything, Coca-Cola bottle, uh, Goodyear tire. The whale was eating everything. So then it found Jonah. It swallowed Jonah. He swallowed Jonah. And it showed in one time and twice and then spilled it out. The now <laughs> So what we learned from this bad Christian, not even a whale can digest. It was the preaching of the brother there. <laughs> Amen. So Jonah God had this plan and this project. But he went straight when he went not straight from the project, everything went wrong. Everything contributed to bring harm, anguish, sadness, pain, affliction. And things only got better in the moment in which those men, he, they got Jonah out of the boat. When they got Jonah's, Jonah out of the boat, the Bible says that the wind calmed down, the storm stopped. You know, when we go to Matthew on the book of Mark, it also speaks about a similar situation. What the disciples of God, they were doing a crossing and at sea. They were in the boat and a wind rose up and a great storm came. But when Jesus entered into the boat, the Bible says that there, were, there was a great, great calm. So with Jonah and the boat, everything goes bad. When Christ and the boat, everything goes well. Who is this one? The disciples said that even the wind and the sea, he speaks to them and they obey him. So then we come up to a conclusion from this, that man that is not in obedience to the Lord he walks through a path, and man that is in obedience to the Lord walks through a new and living path. So the difference here is that who is in the boat? Who is in the boat of my life? And who is in the boat of your life? If the one that is disobedient is in the boat of my life, there is only harm and difficulty, problems and adversities. If Jesus is present in the boat of my life, then everything is going very well. So then the sea rose up. Jonah, he was shown out of the boat. But Jonah, he knew the Lord. And here is how important it is for us to know God. Because if you go and analyze only the difficulty and disobedience and the sin of Jonah, we would not be honest in our convictions. Because the Bible says, my brethren, that everybody has sin and they have been uh, destituted from the grace of God. The sin brings death, and, and the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So Jonah, people say, uh, there are, while there's still life, there's still hope. Jonah was now in a very complicated situation, was uh, in the belly of a big sh fish at sea. So an anguish of hell. Uh, took a hold of me and I only found sadness. So then your prayer came to me in the temple of your holiness. So Jonah to get rid of, get away of this situation in order to reconcile with God, he said, from the womb of hell I cried out. And many times we are going through a moment there that is similar where life is like hell and a difficulty. 
but why man is complaining that's in the Bible everybody complains about their own sins so Jonah recognized his mistake remember the prodigious son he recognized his own mistake so when we recognize that we have made a mistake like the prodigious son said Lord I prayed against heaven and you Jonah recognized that he failed and when when men recognize and have this conviction of recognizing their own sin and repenting the word says my brethren that God in no way will throw that man away the mercies of the Lord are the cause that we are not consumed and they renew every morning and here Jonah what God gave to him was gave him a new life a new opportunity and how many of us one day we were not in the same situation we pleaded to the Lord we prayed to the Lord and the Lord heard uh, our supplication he heard our prayer Jonah that's what he did he recognized that he failed he sinned he understood that there's no way for him to escape from the plan that the project that God had for his life he understood then that it was better it was better to serve the Lord so then he comes and says then Jonah pray to the Lord his God remember brethren, my brethren uh, the people that were in the boat in, in Bahia each one prayed to their own God but the, their gods, they have eye but don't see, they have mouth but don't speak, and their feet but don't walk, and on and on. They are not real gods. But when the servant prayed for his God, the true God, God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Israel, the miracle occurred, happened. So Jonah prayed to the Lord, and, and the Lord is all capital letters because it's the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, the God of the impossible. You know, my brother, the Bible said that the Lord is good. God is good. God is good. John knew his God and knew that his God was good. He knew that God sent him to Nineveh because in Nineveh, Nineveh would convert. Because before the wrath God always uses of mercy. In the same way that God was going to use Jonah to proclaim the project so that people would convert, so that people, so the evil would not come upon them, he, they knew that this God, that in spite of that he had made a mistake, and instead of the fact that he fa failed and went straight for the project of God and caused harm, he knew that his God, if he prayed to his God, his God was going to hear him. And when he prays to his God, he prays on the place where he was alone in the depths of the sea. And Jesus says something very interesting. You, you want to speak with God? Enter into a bedroom, close the door, and there you speak with God, and God will listen to you. It was a moment, that moment you know, of anguish and pain and suffering. It was a moment in which he had a meeting with his God. It was a moment at where he reconciled with his God. And many times, my brethren, we go through moments like this because we many times we many times cause to ourselves so that we recognize the great love of God towards our lives. So John prayed to his God from the belly of the fish covered with his own human reason filled with feelings, doubts and uncertainties but he had a conviction that if he pray if I pray to my God my God will take me out of this situation and that's what the Lord wants to speak to you my brother and sister tonight whatever 
your problem is, the adversity you may be going through. And the Lord was showing through a spiritual gift that there is someone here that in the period of their lives went through a moment of darkness. That person made a wrong decision. And when this person made this wrong decision, the person lost everything that they had, everything, everything that he possessed. He lost his garments, he lost his shoes, he lost everything he had. But tonight, the Lord was operating on the life of this brother. And the Lord was restoring the life of this brother. Amen. In my anguish, I cried out to the Lord. And the Lord knows your problems and your difficulties. But tonight, the Lord heard your prayer. The Lord heard your prayer. And He is bringing your life back to God's presence. And the Lord also has shown a woman. And she was there was a road that was well signaled and well paved but in a certain moment in that trip she got distracted and she did not pay attention to the signs the road signs and then she would enter into a, a short shortcut and this this route would lead her to a precipice to death but the Lord was showing it that at that moment a policeman would come went give a warning to her so that she would go back to the main road so there is no shortcuts the project of God is one alone believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved this is the path. Walk in it without going just straight to either to the right or to the left. And look into the sign. Look, look into the street sign, to the author and finisher of our faith. We are only to walk towards eternity. We cannot allow, stop listening, and stop obeying the voice of the Lord, the plan that God has for His for our lives. The Lord is good. Even the name of God is good. If you pick up all the Ten Commandments, there is more no than yes. You should not give false testimony. You're not going to kill. But many times the Lord says no to us. And then we say, oh, the Lord said no, but we're going to do no. Go on a tangent. There is no, but if God said no, it's to protect you. It's to deliver you. And when he says you for you to go, you can go. Assuredly, because he's going, he's going ahead, opening up all the ways to bless you, your home, and your household. So let us listen to a song.
Deus. A igreja vai se colocar de pé nesse instante. The church will stand up at this moment. They're going to have a word of glorification to our God. Oh, praise your name. You thank you, Lord, because we are in your house tonight, Lord. And this song that has spoken to our hearts. For our names have been written in the book of life, Lord. We glorify for everything, Lord, exalt in the name of the Lord Jesus. We we'll praise you. We're thankful for this moment that we have enjoyed a fellowship with you. We ask, Lord, for your people, for your church that is here, and also for the ones who are with us through the transmissions, so that you may continue to bless and protect and deliver and to answer their needs. Give us new experiences with you, Lord. Help the ones who are in need that come to your house, your orphans, the widows, the pregnant. You bless them, especially the ones who are sick, Lord, that been uh, that caught this COVID. And through the blood of Jesus, we have we will restore the health to your children. Give us a week in your prayer, a blessing, your presence, blessed, filled with victories. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful glory, grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The brethren may be seated. Tuesday at night we're going to have that meeting, meeting so that we can discuss the topics about the Sunday school, 8 at night through Zoom. On Thursday, service also through Zoom and YouTube, a prayer service. This coming Saturday at 7.30, we are going to have a service in presence and Sunday morning, Sunday school, service in presence. And also Sunday night, 7.30, another service in presence. If you need a prayer, also the ones who are with us through Zoom, a few brethren, deacons and ushers are going to de be there to give you the proper system. Just give a signal and then we'll get in touch with you through the, the app. And also the brethren who are present, the ones who are visiting us tonight, if you need a prayer for your life, the clarification about the word that was taught, remain where we are and we're going to give you the proper assistance. If you desire, raise your hand so only so that you can identify you and you're going to go towards you. Peace of the Lord, man.